In continuing with assignment six, we last looked at sketching for what's called text blocking and trying to figure out how can text wrap around our image. Now, you can do this based on any kind of version of your spot illustration. And I want to show you how I created this text blocking sketch because it's using type tools within Photoshop. But I can also show you the most basic way to do it, which is often how I'll start. So I'm just going to create a new Photoshop file. You can sketch this by hand, but you can also sketch it digitally. I'm just going to create a basic 8 by 10 inch by 350 pixels per inch kind of sketch paper. And what I'm going to do is just reference my spot illustration. Maybe your spot illustration isn't perfect yet, and you still want to work on that as assignment five, right? But this is my refined one so far. It's even got the, the thin offset on it to help it look good on dark backgrounds. Once you have that clean PNG, I'll show you the size. This one, it should be around 10 by 10 inches or larger by 350 pixels per inch. Mine is 12 by 15. That gives you a high enough resolution Let's see, I want to view it full size here. Gives you a high enough resolution that you can use that on a full size poster and a full size poster for us is going to be 16 by 20. A standard full size poster is 24 inches by 36 inches, which is larger than our printers can print, but that's kind of a professional poster. And again, the largest that any printing press can accommodate is 30 inches by 40 inches. So when you ha see things on the sides of buses, that's actually made from two different prints that are 30 by 40 inches and then seamed together, right? It used to be the way billboards were made as well before they started getting printed onto canvas. Those are, are those aligned 70 by 80? Yes, generally. So those are like broadsheets. There's like the ones you see on bus stops, you know, New York City and Chicago and stuff, those are usually 30 by 40 because that's just the extent of, of our printing infrastructure. <laughs> so that's where a lot of these standard sizes come from. But if I just look at this, just to be informed by it, I can use this to sketch. So as we've often done, we start this project with our own hands, not just kind of moving things around, but trying to envision and sketch out our vision for the, the end product we want to see. So I'm going to make a new layer here to sketch on top of white. I'll just do it, I'll do it in a, a bluish, a blue line color. I like to use blue just because it's kind of traditional for illustration. There are colored pencils you can get that are called non-photo blue. And what's neat about non-photo blue pencils is that photocopy machines don't register them. So you can sketch all you want and then ink over the top of it the blue pencil and then when you photocopy it the ink is the only thing that shows. That's not true for scanners, it's not true for <laughs> a lot of newer machines, but it, it's kind of a traditional old way of illustrating. So it's the retro thing I like. Okay, so if I'm doing a text blocking sketch, I just want to pay attention to space. This is what we call design. Design is different in many ways than art. I gotta change my brush settings here. I'm not on pressure sensitive in the way I want to be. Make it harder. Yeah, this should work. Okay. So to do text design, it's not fast enough. I'm gonna lower my resolution just for my sketch. I don't like it when my tablet lags. So I'll do 150. To do text design, what you're really doing is you're solving problems. So if art's about expression, man, I don't know why this is so slow. I'll try restarting my Photoshop. These are our beginning of the day problems. 
So this is going to be assignment six, text blocking sketch. So if art is about expression, and art is about you know trying to communicate your intentions, your creative intentions to an audience, uh, it's also about experimentation, and it's also about reacting to the process, seeing what you want to do. Some artists really, really try to fit the vision in their head. Other artists let the, the process kind of dictate what comes out, and then they recognize what they like, and then they stop the process there, right? It can be very free-flowing. Design can't be that way. Design is based on solving problems, right? So the first thing you have to do is set up your problem for design. And of course, design is an art. Creativity has a large place in design. But fundamentally, it is about problem solving. Oh, you know why it's going slow? It's because I have my smoothing on still from when I was doing line art. All right, there we go. So text design starts first with space blocking. And remember when we did our logos and you had to sketch a positive negative space solution, right? That's dealing with the notion of space. So the first thing I'm going to do is make little thumbnails. These are small, quick drawings, right? I know it's going to be a portrait format, which is vertical. So all of these are going to be kind of rough, poster-sized thumbnails. And the space blocking for the text has to take into account the shape and space that my, I want my illustration to take. So the most basic is I just put it in the middle of the poster. You know, I want to show off my illustration. My illustration is basically circular. That was the intention. So then how do I block text around it to make this not look like just a vertical Japanese flag? So what I can do is I can maybe run something above it and something below it, right? And I know what my text is. It is work in progress. The more words you have, the more design problems that gives you. Like, how do you fit it all in? How do you make it readable? So I can fit in work. So usually I'll just block it in. So that's four letters. So it'd be W-O-R-K, right? And I can fit in progress down here. Where do I put the in? You know, I can put it over here, maybe as a little spot. But do I like that overall shape and that look? And I'll know just from this thumbnail if it's working or not. Also, it's good to do multiple thumbnails because you might do something kind of radical, like this. That's one half of my illustration. This is another half of my illustration, right? And maybe I do the text blocking right above it, like this. Maybe this is work in, and then this would be the text block here, progress. But what I tend to like to do is to make a text design that works with the spot illustration so that it can also be a spot illustration. <laughs> Just because I like to get as much use out of it as possible. So what might that look like? Well, I showed you how you can take your finished spot illustration and you can make it, you can create a, a profile on Redbubble, and you can make your work either public or private to you, and you can use that PNG, a high resolution PNG, with the offset to make a variety of products. You know, my favorites are the stickers and the magnets, but the t-shirts, the acrylic cubes, the buttons. I disabled a lot of products I don't want to deal with, but these are kind of the basic ones, right? And the stickers, the whole reason you make it at a high resolution is so they can be small stickers like this. They can even be large stickers, 14 inches by 13 inches, almost like wall decals, right? Like that. And you want all that versatility. Now, if you go to 
once you've set that up and once you add a few works, you'll have a portfolio. And you again, you can make them public or private. So this is one I did last semester. I don't think I've made this public yet. Let's see. So as you're working on it, you say only you make it private. But this is just an example of combining a spot illustration with some type. Right. So this was a Day of the Dead illustration of Nico the Nighthawk, and then I had those initials of NLC you know, over it, and kind of this street art, spray paint, graffiti style, with way too many little color hold stars. Or another one. Just to show you different kind of type solutions. An image for the college. This was part of our coloring book. But for the president, I made a, a full, full color cover of the coloring book. So this image, it took the spot illustration, then it has to kind of figure out how to wrap this text around it in a way that's engaging and supports it. So this is problem solving. Whether the text is hand drawn like it was in the Day of the Dead one, whether it's modifications of existing typefaces that are in the computer already, ex existing vector shapes like these, or if it's a mix between the two, right? I like it when I sketch not to have it limited to just fitting within that vertical poster format, but to have it work as a spot illustration on its own. So something like this. So then I might need to zoom in and sketch with a little bit more insight once I've played around. And I always recommend do around five thumbnails. I'll recommend that for your final project as well. I'll require at least three. But let's try the text blocking. So I have, you know, my tiger. And then we have this idea of work. So I can float it up here, maybe at an angle. Work. And then I could have in, maybe at another angle. And then progress down here. So that's a solution. Do I like how that kind of floats? Yeah, it's okay. My design, this design happens to be very symmetrical. So that's maybe something that I can pick up with the type. So maybe it needs to be very symmetrical too, like perfectly centered, perfectly centered. But then I run into that problem of it's three words, right? And where do I fit that? And then I think, you know, what I really want to do is just put it right in the middle there, floating over. So maybe that's a solution. Work in and then progress. Notice I don't even need to write the letters. I can just block out where the letters, the space they would fill. You can do things like this. Text blocking on the side. Work. Right. My illustration. I can split it in. And then progress. I recommend trying out visually this quickly before you commit to any vertical solution because it can be really tricky to figure out spacing and readability vertically. We don't tend to read words this way. And sometimes designers, if they want a vertical format, will actually write the words horizontally, you know, like so, because it's actually easier to read than this way. So that's why sketching can be very helpful. And then the ultimate solution, my design is kind of inspired by, by flash art, tattoo flash art, this tiger. So maybe like a tattoo, I could always just have the design because t like a mom tattoo or they'll often have flash art and then they'll always allow for some customization, right? You want your, your name on there or you want it to be a dedication to your grandfather who died. So what tattoo artists will do is they'll just create a banner over the image and then text block in there. 
Now, my only issue with that is work in progress is a lot.